Okay, Coach, so normally thoughts turn to basketball this time of year in the Hoosier State, but not so this year. The NFL playoffs have come to Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. Today we continue on in Wild Card Weekend with a great AFC matchup between the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. On second down now, it's Taylor. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. That didn't appear to be a run, but he just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Throwing on third down, Watson. Into the hands of the tight end, this is Jordan Thomas. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. On first down, Taylor. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Here's Watson. That's caught by his tight end, Jordan Akins. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 31-yard line. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, he usually gets it done. Looks like he's going to get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Second down. It's Taylor. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. The seventh play now of this opening drive. This is third and long, though. Now Watson. Open man is Miller. He's got it. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 17-yard line. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, He's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script. However, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. On the jet sweep, here comes Fuller. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. 
from 17 yards out. And the Texans take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. Fairbairn good with the extra point. And that makes the score 7-0. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbair now to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. his first carry and he's brought down getting this one up to about the 35 a gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down well as we've learned over the years just because a guy plays left tackle doesn't mean he doesn't have run blocking abilities and we just saw it there controlled the line of scrimmage created a big game that's kind of a bonus he's there to protect that high value that you have back under center but he creates space in the run game yeah not only can he dance he can mash too it won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. Well, the defensive guys won't be real happy because there won't be a sack on this play because he did get back to the line of scrimmage. But what a job they did overall. Hemmed him in and gave him nowhere to go with the football. 51, Mike. Mike, 51. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Go, Mike, 51. Throwing again on second down. Reset. That's complete to the running back, Naeem Hines. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. Man, I got you. Man, I got you. First down. They'll run on first down. Hines. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Set him back five. Following the delay, here's second and nine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And here we go again. Here we go again. Come on, come on. Mike, Mike 51. Mike 51. To throw Brissett. He's got his target. That's Zach Pascal. His first catch of this wild card game, and it's good for a first down. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 42-yard line. Now it's Hines. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Bissett. Catch made here by Campbell. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On third down, Brissett flushed out right. And he hits his tight end, Ebron. How about 25 yards on third down? They'll take it. Sometimes it's designed, and sometimes you just have to know when to leave the pocket and move and make something happen. And on that play, he was able to get on the run and was still accurate throwing the football. On first down, it's Hines. Showed off the juke, but still corralled shy of the five at the six-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Brings up second and three at the six-yard line.
A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Check safety, check safety. Watch the air. They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A six-yard touchdown run as they are now on the board here in the first half. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep your assignments. Let them run it in, and they did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. And result, touchdown. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. That's fielded in the end zone. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offensive tummy. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. A shotgun snap for Watson. And Thomas has it. His second catch of this wild card game, and it goes for a first down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. Second down now. It's Taylor. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Seven yards there and a first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Now Taylor. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. At this stage of the game, the run-pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, here's Watson. Escaping the pressure right, and that is incomplete. It's been my observation, there's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves them with five more. Third and five now. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Watson. And that is incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Two minutes to play here in this first half of the NFL playoffs. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. At their own 23-yard line. 
The Indy offense at the line and set to go. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Brings up second and nine at the 25-yard line. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. They go play action with Brissett. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. 41 to Mike. 41 to Mike. Let's set a tone. Third and short yardage for Sam. He's going to fire one deep, and that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Zach Paschal, 70 yards. And the Colts are going to jump back in front. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Are you looking forward? Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Inside of a minute left in the half. Does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or I guess don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences me even more is who I've got running my football team out on the field and the weapons around him. Can he make a play? Can he get into someone that we're going to trust to take care of the ball? If that's the case, I might push it a little bit here and try and get something before the half runs out. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing again is Watson. Flush to his right. Looking long for Thomas. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Out of the gun, Watson. He's letting this one go for Fuller. And that's caught inside the 35. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. Watson going to pull back the handoff and keep it himself. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. It actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Watson going to pull back the handoff and keep it himself. They'll get this out wide to Taylor. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Again, it's Watson. He finds Taylor, complete. 
They'll get a couple yards on that one. And that'll bring up fourth down. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He connected on his first, this from 41. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. So yes, they'll still be down going into intermission, but the deficit is now made even smaller, very manageable. Yeah, and if nothing haywire happens here in this last couple of precious seconds, they will go into the locker room with a nice bounce in their step, having gotten a little bit closer on the scoreboard. That'll be taken in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. Time for a final kneel down or a safe run, and then they can head to the locker room with a lead. Yeah, or they can even run a screen. You know, something they feel is somewhat safe that might actually pop and turn into a big play. That's what you usually run in this situation. Or go four verticals because why not? Because you're feeling it, right? <laughs> you're just feeling it. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. 51 to Mike, boy. 51. Plus five. They'll throw now on the final play. Going top shelf for Smith-Schuster. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there trying to take a shot, but it's third down. So we're at halftime in this AFC wild card matchup as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach, both teams try to avoid being one and done in these playoffs as we start the second half of this AFC wild card game. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. They have the lead now. They'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. From the 29, Brissett. That's complete to Jack Doyle, the tight end. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. His first catch of this wild card game, and it's good for a first down. They'll run on first down. Hines, and this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. They run again with Hines, and he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. J.J. Watt makes another tackle there, and, and it's for a minimal gain. And let's face it, if that's all you're going to get running the ball, you're not going to have much success against him and his team. Or, yeah, you better find a way to go around J.J. Watt, which isn't easy to do. It's really not, because you got to try everything. Can you go around him? Can you go by him? Can you influence him to get him out of position so maybe you can wall him off? He's a really sharp, intelligent player, as well as a physical specimen. And Pascal's got it. It's a first down following a gain of three. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. 
But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. On first down, it's Hines. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Hines. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. A bullet throw, but incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. And this one is right down Broadway. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. And I would say that you pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though, three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and ten. Eluding the pressure right. Going deep for Hopkins. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Well, he was just trying to contain DeAndre Hopkins, and he got a little too close. And because of his ability to line up in different spots on the field and come at you from different angles, different guys have to cover him, and all of them have the same issue. How do you do it without interfering? In this case, it didn't get done. They go play action here on first down. Dancing to his left. He'll run it. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. He'd had some success as a runner previously on this drive, just not as much space there that time. Yeah, this time when he pulled it down, they were ready for him, so I think he's going to have to fling a few in order to open up that running lane again. Here's Taylor, and they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Go! On third down, Watson. He completes this into the hands of Miller. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. 
they become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. He's got nine points on field goals now. He's made three of them. That gets him a bit closer, but there's no question they need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And for him, it's not his concern, right? He just goes out there when they call on him and goes ahead and puts points up on the board. But the offense has got to get together and figure out what's stalling their drives so they have to keep calling on him. One quarter remains for the right to survive round one here in the AFC. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. I guess the good news as they start this drive is that they, they still do have the lead, Charles. If their defense hadn't been able to hold them to a field goal on the other side, they'd be down. But now it's about preserving that very small lead. It is preserving and maybe stretching it out a little bit because if you're a starter on that side of the ball, I certainly hope you didn't lose up your shoulder pads you start to cut the tape off because if you did you did it way too soon they've got to go back out there with renewed vigor for lack of a better term and also a good plan they need points and they need them now play fake Brissett Ebron caught left side only three yards on the catch it's third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. The Colts on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and four. Come on, boy. 51. Come on. It's out of time, guys. Out of time. Let's get off the field. Let's get off the field. 51 Mike. Mike 51. Tighten up. Tighten up. <laughs> From the gun, here's Brissett. Looks to throw, fires right side. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. This is taken at the 18, and he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt, and the Texans will take over with a first and 10. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down to the kick, other than the extra point. That's it. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. This is Miller. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone, following a pickup of about seven or eight. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, and he's in. Touchdown, Houston. A 20-yard touchdown. And the Texans have once again taken the lead. As more and more up-tempo football creeps into the NFL game, some coaches don't think time of possession matters anymore. I believe we found one of them. A big spot now for the Texans as they'll try for two. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And he is not going to make it. So they won't be able to move this lead up to a touchdown as it'll remain a five-point ball game. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Let's go now! 
The Indy offense at the line and set to go. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight, unable to find anyone open. Throwing again, Brissett on second and ten. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. But that was a big oops right there. But how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Yeah, pounced right back on it, keeps possession. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Reset. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. Trying to erase that deficit all at once. One big shot. He took it. Unfortunately for him, incomplete. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. We're set to throw for it on fourth. Got an open man. That's Campbell. That pickup goes for 25. What a flip of the script from fourth down to first. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Brissett now a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Now, this time he'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Throwing again on second and ten. Brissett, he's going to rifle one deep left side. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off at the 15. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. They get the crucial turnover just huge, but now they've got the football deep in their own territory. And you got to be careful because if you give it right back, there goes your lead. Have to be extremely happy with their defense. They received a gift, that takeaway. Even though they're deep in their own territory, now they have the football. And you know there's always that alpha on defense, that grouchy guy. Forget what the coaches said. I'll guarantee you, he told the quarterback, we just took care of you, now you take care of us. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. On second down, it's Taylor. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Now what a first down pickup of eight. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Switch it, switch it, switch it. Come on. Taylor. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. 
They turn to the fullback, Gillespie. And yeah, not much doing. He'll get this only up to about the 36. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. midfield. Will Fuller, nobody there to stop him. And he's across for the touchdown. And in the final minute, that should just about seal it. Now they talked about stringing together some explosive plays here in the playoffs. That was a pretty explosive play. It certainly was. And if you're going to win on the road, it certainly helps to have big playability in your hip pocket, doesn't it? Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Campbell making the catch. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. That one covers 29 yards. First down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. down, Brissett. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. Makes it second and 10 at the 23-yard line. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. And of the air once more, it's Brissett. And he can't hang on. That's definitely going to be what he wishes he had back. Incomplete in the end zone. Brings up third down and ten. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. And Charles on the losing side of things. You know, they didn't come in here as the favorite to these playoffs, but they came in with a lot of hope and anticipation. Tough to have that all snuffed out so quickly. It really is. You're one of 12 teams when the playoffs begin that still has a chance to win the Super Bowl. So that's pretty darn good. And as you often talk about, a lot of hope when the playoffs start. Well, that ended for them. But when they look back, they'll have a lot to be proud of and see if they turn the page towards the next season. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. So long, everybody.